Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, welcome to the course of organic farming. In last few classes, we have know what is the definition of organic farming, what is the scope and limitation, what is the trend in the export for India and what is the agricultural growth in terms of organic farming in the globes, what about the different types of biofertilizer and other organic source of nutrients integrated weed management, we have already known. In this class, we will mainly deal how to grow for organic package of practices of different type of field crops. How can we grow different type of field crops under the organic farming? If we just want to classify our field crops, just we can mainly classify into three parts. One is the cereals. So, whatever we are everyday using for our major staple food, rice, sweet, maize and also nowadays we are growing different types of millets like finger millet and also we are growing sargam, bajra and other things. This also all are come under the cereals. Whatever the dals we are using for along with the, our roti or rice, what this type of pulse is also important and they are also coming in the field crops. And for that we are growing lentil, chickpea, pigeon pea, black gram, green gram, rice bean, rajma and then some other crops. Similarly, whatever the oil seed crops, whatever the crops we are also growing for the oil seed purpose. It may be rapeseed mustard, it may be sesam sunflower, safflower and also our groundnut, soybean, this all under the oil seed. So, mainly our these crops like cereals, pulses and oil seeds, they are the major portion of our all of the field crops. And whenever we growing this type of field crops, we have to take in too much consideration because most of the crops like cereals, rice, wheat, they are very highly nutrient exhaustive in nature. So, there is some package of practices under organic which is little bit different as compared to our conventional inorganic management practices. If you see organic agriculture, we everyone know for the our last classes, it is a systemic farming where we cannot use any inorganic fertilizer and pesticides. And most of the time we have to rely on the cover crops, mulching, crop rotation, intercropping, legume incorporation, crop diversification, farm diversification and also different type of quality compost preparation including the vermicompost. We cannot use any insecticide or pesticide or inorganic fertilizer. So, we have to very much take care whenever we are growing some type of field crops which are permitted and which are not permitted. And if you see, generally organic farming is with the soil. Here our main concept is not to feed the plant, feed the soil. We always try to promote the soil fertility, the soil capacity, soil physical status, soil chemical status, soil bioecological status we want to promote. Only that the soil will be self sustainable to provide all the nutrients for their plant growth. And if you see there are different types of organic farming where protects one is the crop rotation. It is mean although in our majority part of India we are growing rice followed by wheat these two crops and this rice wheat cropping system, they take lots of nutrient from the soil and for that we have to apply too much of fertilizer. So, if you do for this rice or wheat bale and we want to do some organic farming, we have to must do for the crop rotation. If we only go for rice and wheat, then it will be very tough to give the nutrients from the organic sources. So, always we try to promote to crop rotation. This year we maybe go for wheat, next year we go for can pea. This year we go for rice, next year we can grow for soybean and groundnut. So, there is very much need of crop rotation, especially when you are growing this type of field crops are organic management practices. Similarly, cover crops, there are a lot of crops that not only fix nitrogen in the soil, but also they have some impact. Whenever there is too much rainfall or there may be some wind erosion, they protect the soils from the soil erosion. They also just moderate the soil temperature also reducing the evaporation loss of moisture from the soil and conserve soil moisture. So, they also help in plant growth. Similarly, in or whenever in organic farming, we cannot use apply of any inorganic fertilizers like urea, DAP, maybe or SSP and other potash fertilizer, but we have to promote different type of bio fertilizers. Some may be the nitrogen fixer like rhizobium we are praising in the legumes. So,
whenever we go for organic farming. Similarly, there are different type of phosphorus bacteria and also there are other things like Ajola, Brugi, Azotobacter, Azospirillum. These different types of bio in case of organic management practices of the field crop. And in our later part in our lecture, I will cover all these aspects in details. Also, we have to use the and compost also they are bulky in nature, but they are the major so, we have to make very good quality compost and we have or composting may be Bangalore method, Naped method, Indore method, Coimbatore method of earthworms. By with this earthworm, we can produce a very good quality vermicompost part of our organic farming system and also the biopesticides because use insecticide. But there is some bio just like the neem oil, they has the capacity to reduce the population of the insect, they have some insect repellent plant is there. Similarly, of case of weed population, weed control, we cannot use the herbicide. So, whatever the different other things, how we can use different cropping system, allochemicals, whatever the different type of bio herbicide is there, what is the different type of mechanical weeder is there. So, we have to always think in a combination. In organic farming, we, we have not only one option, because only one option is very easy for inorganic, you go for a herbicide spray. But whenever we go for organic farming, we have to make amalgamation of all these different type of technologies which is available. It is maybe cultural, it is maybe biological, it is maybe mechanical or it is maybe our traditional knowledge. So, we have to always make a plan, we have to think for the whole farm, not a particular crop in organic farming. So, what is we know cereals are the very important crop. Everyone we are depends on the cereal every day. We have a 130 crore population in India and we are mostly dependent on the cereals. Every day we are taking cereals in the form of rice, we are also from, making with the also form of chapati from wheat or maize. Also, we are growing every time different type of millets like finger millets and others. So, cereal play a very important role and these cereals they are providing majority of our nutrients also the energy and also the protein content. They are rich in vitamin, they are rich in protein, they also minerals, keep our healthy sugar levels and easy bowel movements, they also aids in maintaining weight. So, cereal is very much integration of our diet. So, how in organic farming we can produce different type of cereal that I will discuss in the later slides. So, if you see the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Department of Agriculture Cooperation and that estimate. Although our area if you see our total production of the rice is 117 million ton, next second is the wheat 107 million ton and third is the maize that is 29 million hectare. Apart that also we are growing different type of coarse cereals or millets 47 million ton. So, if we three that is about 295.67 million ton, that is near about 300 million ton our total food grain production. Within this food grain two part is coming, one is the cereal just like rice, wheat, maize, millet and second is the pulses. This pulse production and cereal production when we combine they are called the food grain production. If we see in case of when India got the independence in the 1970s and after 2, 3 years in the 1950, our total food grain production is only 50 million ton. At that time our population may be 33 or 40 crore, also the population has been increased by more than 3 times, but nowadays our food grain production is 300 million ton. So, our total food grain production has been increased by 6 times. So, that is why we can provide enough food for our human being, whatever the population is in India and we can export different type of cereals maybe and there is also very much chance of selling the organic rice, especially from the basmati rice and also for the different type of just uh, our scented rice, maybe our Gobind Bhog, maybe Joha rice from the Asar, black rice or Chakhao from the Monipur. So, these are always very costly. So, whenever we do be in organic farming, if the farmers get proper certification, there is enough chance to sell this organic rice and other cereals to the other countries and sell a very good amount of foreign exchange. So, if you see this is the important fact what is the highlighting the crop diversification. Whenever we are growing cereal, we should not only promote the cereal because in organic farming only cereal and cereal then it will be tough to maintain not only the soil fertility, but also the control insect pest and diseases. So, we have to do the farm income, the sustainable production income is needed, food and nutrient security is there 
employment generation will be given, poverty elevation will be given. And this is the motto of our present government to doubling the farm income by 2022. And that will not possible by only owing growing cereals, cereals and cereals in the same crop rotation. So, we have to always change different type of not only we have the change the crops, but we also can different type of livestock and other horticultural crops include. So, there is a need of farm diversification. So, cropping system you know this is the important component of a farming system represent a cropping pattern used on a farm and their interaction with farm resources, other farm enterprises and available technology. The cropping system also include the crop diversification I told, we should not go for only one crop. In the same field, we should grow 5, 6, 10 different type of crops. So, if there is something problem for a particular crop, there may be some crop loss, maybe insect pest damages, but we get some income from the others. So, this is called crop diversification, not a single monocropping, different type of croppings and different crops in the same time in the same unit of land we are growing. Similarly, the crop rotation I have already discussed, we are changing the cropping system and also the we can use different types of intercropping, especially for the legumes. Whenever we are growing rice or maize, in especially for the direct seed rice, we can grow for soybean, groundnut. So, they not only fix the nitrogen in the soil, but what they do these legumes when we are growing intercropping? Certain part of their fixed nitrogen they are giving to the associated cereals that is called sparing effect. So, in the what happened? The cereal suppose is need 100 kilo nitrogen, but he got 25 or 30 kilo nitrogen from the associated legumes. The total nitrogen demand which we have to supply through organic sources from the outside that will reduced. So, this also promotes the organic farming. So, this goal of the soil health maintenance is to achieve long term stable high productivity. If we are producing for today, 5 ton, 6 ton, it is okay, but after 10 years, our yield is being low because soil fertility has been declined, then that is not sustainable agriculture. In sustainable agriculture, we have to produce quality and good quantity of food without detouring the soil, without detouring the environment and without detouring the ecosystem. So, this is only possible if we grow for the organic farming. This is the different type of cropping system we know, multiple cropping, two or three are croppings in the same field mixed cropping and strip intercropping, this is the different type of croppings we are already I have discussed in my previous classes. And if that if we show, this is the picture of rice plus soybean 4 is 2 to intercropping in upland condition, 4 line of rice along 2 line of soybean. So, this soybean has the capacity to fix nitrogen in the soil, biological nitrogen fixation. So, they enrich the soil fertility, they give some additional because a human not only need the cereals, they also need the pulses or oil seed. So, we are producing a different type of crop and also whatever the nitrogen they are fixing, a certain part they are giving to the rice. So, total nitrogen demand of the rice is being reduced. Similarly, we can go also for rice plus groundnut, 4 line of rice along with 2 line of the groundnut. Similarly, not only rice, this type of intercropping, whenever we grow for organic farming in cereal based cropping system, also we promote to the maize. So, this is maize plus groundnut intercropping and maize plus soybean intercropping. Similarly, all other crops we can also go this type of and whenever we intercropping we have to take, we have to take care that crop should not be compete with each other, their nutrient demand, peak nutrient demand should not coincide. So, their harvesting period also should coincide, then there will be synergy between the crops and maximum benefit we can gain. Now, I am covering the organic rice cultivation. Rice is a very important crop. Most of the Indian population is dependent of rice directly or indirectly. Also, the, there is dependence on the wheat. And if we show what is the different type, we should promote. There is a normal package of practices rice, whatever the some novel things in which area we have to take, I am only highlighting this. You have to recycling of the crop residue, whatever the rice residue is there, you should not burn. That rice residue either may have you to compost or again giving in the soil in the back then only your soil fertility will be managed. Crop rotation, only rice wheat, rice wheat will not solve the purpose. You have to change the crop either in case your kharif, otherwise you have to change in case of pea, in case of wheat, then only your soil fertility balance will be maintained. Similarly, inclusive of legumes, either you can done in intercrop or in sequence, I have already discussed about that. Green manuring, also sometimes you shall promote different type of crops, maybe our sespania or the some other crops growing before the rice of mineral rocks like rock phosphate because in phosphorus we cannot apply any fertilizer like SSP or DAP. But rock phosphate is naturally derived and we can apply especially in case of phosphorus deficient soil in the acidic soil of India we can use rock phosphate. So, there is biological pest control is the main thing because we cannot use any synthetic agrochemicals and we control whatever the other things we have also managed under the organic terms. 
So, if you see climate, the water management, generally water rice for water is very much needed. For producing only 1 kilo, for producing generally 1 kilo of rice, we need more than 1500 liter of water. So, there is huge amount of water is needed. So, and rice is a very water consuming crop, but majority time we are our water is being wasted. So, we have to take care in our field and we have to go some modern rice cultivation practices, maybe SRI that is system of rice intensification or ICM integrated crop management, where we can produce more amount of rice under organic farming with this method. So, the water requirement will be less. So, because there is some rainfall is problem, there may be irrigation is problem. So, we have to always promote this type of innovative rice cultivation techniques. And also see this SRI, they, they are also reducing the water saving 30 to 40 percent. So, huge amount of water they are known to save. And if we see what is the difference between different type of this rice cultivation techniques. In case of conventional rice farming, you see we are using very old seedlings, 30 days old, only 3 seedlings per hill and spacing is 20 to 15 centimeter. While in case of SRI, we are seeing very young seedlings, only 20 to 14, 12 to 14 days using, one seedlings per hing and spacing high. So, it is reducing also the seed requirement, because seed is very precious and seed is very costly. If you go for the some high yielding or hybrid rice, they are very costly seed. So, if we can require the, we can reduce the requirement of the seed, our cost of cultivation will be decreased. Similarly, but a new technology has been arrived from the ICR that is called ICM, that is integrated crop management. It is in between the conventional and also the ICM. CM that is conventional and SRI. And if we see by this process, we are not using very old seedlings like 30 days or very young seedlings like 20 days, that is 20 days old seedling. And we are not using 4 or 3 seedlings, not 1, that is also in between SRI and conventional. And we are using 2 seedlings per hill, spacing is 20 to 20 centimeter, that is we are always promoting this type of square planting. So, what will help if we grow rice plant in type of croyer planting? So, our always we can run different type of instruments like cono weeder, not only this way, we can also run the cono weeder in vertical way. So, whatever the weed is existing here, we can control very efficiently, because in organic farming we cannot use any herbicide and weed control always needs lots and lots of manual labors. So, cost of production will be enhanced and sometimes if the farmers, if the labors are busy, some other activities, maybe narega activities and other, it is very tough to get the labor. So, always we have to promote this type of culture where the mechanical weeding we can be done, so that our weeding problem as well as the yield reduction will be less. So, we can maintain our good yield even under the organic condition. And if you see, this is the different type of picture, how we should go for SRI or the integrated crop management in rice. After the labeling of field, we are producing the seed in different nursery. And the seed we have been uprooted in the very small stage, if you see only 18 to 20 days old seedlings. What about the benefit of the young seedlings? So, when we rise, put this young seedlings in the main field, it get the enough time to produce more tiller. So, even we use so, transplant this rice seedlings in very mass space, maybe spacier, but due to the enough seedlings emergence, we will getting very good yield. Also, they are reducing the crop duration. The crop maturity is reduced by 7 to 10 days and this is very much important when we are growing a, some other crops, suppose rice wheat crop rotation. And generally in the for growing the wheat after the rice, the window is very short. And that is why farmers when they are not getting enough time, they are mostly going for the burning of the rice residue, wheats cause a huge problem, pollution and smoke in case of Delhi and other areas. But if we can reduce our rice duration by 10 days, so 10 days we get extra time. In this 10 days we can also go for different type of decomposing of the rice residue with the help of different type of OS decomposer and so we can go for the happy seeder. So, by this process even we reduce 10 or 7 days, this is very much important because if our wheat sowing is delayed after the rice and it is go up to the April or May, then due to the high temperature yield of the following wheat will be reduced. So, always we should promote this type of culture and you see uh, we are giving some farmers, farmers are seeing by their own eyes how to we have to grow the rice, how our farmers, our laborers are planting the rice in lines in our experimental farm. So, what is the different, what is the benefit? Less seed requirement I have told in conventional it is 30 to 40 kilo, in case of SRI it is only 5 to 7 kilo, while in case of ICM it is 10 to 12 kilo. So, there is a enough seed saving, 
similarly less water is a requirement because every time we are also telling the climate change global warming potential and rice field always we tell we have just uh, blame them to produce too much methane production. But if you see whenever we go for SRI or ICM, we are not maintaining 5 or 8 centimeter of rice throughout the period of rice cultivation. Sometimes after certain periods 10 or 15 days there may be water stagnation 1 inch, after that we also using the wetting and drying. So, whatever the water is draining out. So, whenever we taking the draining out and there is not continuous fluid flood, our methane production will be less very much. Similarly, our water we can save and also we can go for boro rice, where in a major area if you see the Punjab area they are growing rice with lots of 15, 18, 20 irrigation. So, if we go for this method, probably we need less water. Similarly, chemical input is less expenditure in organic pesticide definitely, whenever this path, because they are hardy in nature, so insect pest resistant and also they reduce the crop duration. And I have already written when there is crop rotation of the rice will be less, so we have a enough sowing time for growing the next crop in the rice fellow. If you see this is the root structure, a one experimental field has been done, however in conventional system is rice is going up to this way, but if you see the SRI and ICM, the root system is very vigorous. Not only enhance the total root length, it also increase the root volume and others and finer roots. So, root is going a deeper soil layer. So, there may be some nutrients which are present in the deeper soil layer and they can be taken by this process. So, in this process, the rice plants can absorb different type of nutrients which is not present in the surface layer. And in organic farming, where we have very limited source of applying different type of fertilizer, we cannot use this easily available fertilizer like urea and DAP. We have to promote this type of mechanism, where plant can make them hardy, make their root system so robust, so they can take the nutrients whichever is present in the deeper soil layer also. There are different diseases of rice and there is blast pathogen that is pyrecula oryzae, brown spot pathogen, helminthosporium oryzae, false smart and other. For the insect pests, there is stem borer, gall mees, leaf folder, gandhi bug and rice hispa. So, whether you are doing organic farming or inorganic farming, the rice pest will be there, rice disease will be there. Now, how scientifically you can control this rice pest and disease, upon that your yield will be level. So, generally, when in case of organic farming, we cannot use any type of insecticide. So, always we promote the use of botanical such as neem based formulas. We have to also provide different types of natural enemy. Trichodama, because this also the biological organisms which not only we they helps to control the insect space. There are lots of insect rice is there and they prey upon this insect, they kill that insect and indirectly they help us for getting better yield. Also, we have different type of organic menu spraying of Bufaria bashiana that is a plant based product that is microbial based product and it is we can use in our organic farming. Similarly, neem cake or neem oil they are also want to prevent the insect pest and diseases, botanical like others biotes and defender is producing and also a simple solution, 2 percent solution of the turmeric powder, because this turmeric is very important in our Indian mythology. And if you see this is always telling the, in the COVID situation also that we are advising to take a people turmeric powder along with milk. So, they have some also defense mechanism and different type of paste and 2 percent solution of the turmeric power is very much effective in the rice blast. So, whenever in our organic farming, our fields should be very much clean, we have to talk different type of crop rotation, we have to go for crop diversification and after that whenever we going rice, we have to go for newer innovation method like SRI and ICM and control whatever the paste or disease, we have to control organically with different local and our different organic formulation which is approved. This is the organic weed management. Just in our previous class, I have already told, although there is less research or less importance is given on the weed, but weed cause a major problem. For lowland rice, sometime the 20 to 40 percent yield reduction, but if you go for the upland rice or direct seeded rice, sometimes 70, 80 percent yield locus due to the weed. So, weed also some weed is so clever, they look just like the rice plant, just echinocola. And in the initial stage, you can identify it which is the rice and which is the and weed and you cannot use any herbicide. So, always in organic management or organic production of rice, weed control always takes too much cost. So, we have to take different type of, just like we have also going, if we are growing rice in line transplanting, either maybe SRI or maybe ICM method, 
we can run cono weed. So, we can reduce the cost and whatever the weed is generating within the cono weeder, we are incorporating within the soil. So, the biomass again going back to the soil to enhance the soil fertility. And most common weeds if you see Echinocola colonum, Echinocola crassgalli, Cyperas irea, Cyperas deformis and different type of others. Weeds should be removed generally, we are two hand weeding generally we can do, others for mechanical weeding, one is 20 days after transplanting and second to 50 to 60 days. And dual cropping we are also going with Ejola, application different type of also is there and releasing of ducklings. Sometime there is rice come duck farming is being promoted. So, near about pond we are raising the ducks and we are allowing to visit the ducks to the rice field. So, what they happen? They eat different type of weeds which are present in the rice field and they also eat different type of insects which are present in the rice field. So, they indirectly control also the insect population and they also reducing the weed problem in rice. You see, this is our normal field how a cono weeder is being, this is the cono weeder, but I, we have image to see when a small farmer every time probably he has not the ability or he is not the market is very easy, he cannot purchase the type of, they produce one locally made wooden cono weeder, how beautifully he has made by his own innovation. So, this type of innovation in organic farming always should be promoted, so that they can produce their own farm implement with very little cost. Generally, by this process, if you go for organic farming, there is a enough scientific process. So, we can go for rice organically and even if the oil managed direct seeded rice crop yield is 3 to 3 point hectare under organic production, direct seeds and for transplanted 4.5 to 5 point ton per hectare. So, there is not so much of yield reduction. We can grow rice in organically and we, if the certification we can done and there is proper marketing facility we can take. So, we can earn huge income especially for I have already told for the specialty rice maybe basmati rice and also for the scented rice. Then how the different type of rice ecosystem we can use? Always we are trying in case of cropping system or field crops, rice, wheat, we should promote crop diversification, we should grow different type of pulse crops either maybe in a sequence, cropping sequence or the intercropping. And if you see how we are growing, this is the lentil crop, we are growing in between rice fellow and if you see the rice stubble is there. So, we are going for the tilo, zero tillage, we are not whatever the rice straw we should be always managed because this rice straw not only helps to provide the nutrient, but also they are help as a soil conditioner. And if we dug the peel, we have just simply tilling and plowing, then there, be, there will be no moisture. And most of these crops we want to promote without irrigation. So, we have to grow in the residual soil moisture. So, this is the some pictures how we are growing lentil. Similarly, you see this is the picture after rice, how we can, we can grow a very good cultivation of the pea. And pea is very much you know, a 60 rupees, 100 rupees, 80 rupees per kilo. So, that they not only enhance the uh, just income of the farmers, but they also biological nitrogen fixation. So, in the whenever you grow this type of technology, if a farmer is growing only rice, he is getting 10 bag of rice, probably in the next year, if he has done with the in the fellow period or winter period go for P, he can make 11 or 12 bag of products. So, this is also by this way, he is also the yield of the rice is enhanced. So, now we are coming to the organic maize cultivation. Maize is also a very important coarse cereal crop and maize is not only cultivated for rice, our human consumption, but maize is the major contributor of the animal feed, maybe pig feed, cattle feed and poultry industry is mostly depend on this maize seed crop. So, if you go for organic poultry production or organic meat production, we have to also feed them the organically grow maize. So, there is different type of climatic requirements is needed and may, may not only it can grow in the Kharif season, in the Ravi or summer season also being maize is grow. So, if you see there are a different type of seed rate and there. So, weed culture also hoeing is permitted. Generally, 4 to 6 irrigation is required in the winter season if or the summer season if there is no rainfall. And nutrient management we have to always promote. If you see azospirillum, azotobacter, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria and also well decomposed FOIM and other things. And if you see, we have to also apply the panchagrobo. Panchagrobo we can apply at the 3 percent per hectare and cow urine. So, always we have to try this type of our liquid organic manure and also our traditionally known different type of cow products. So, control different type of insect pest and diseases. Amelioration of soil acidity. We just already a lots of part of India is being acidic. 
So, what is the remedy? One good thing is that we there is a permission to apply lime in organic farming and this liming is always provocated to give a better yield because when we liming is the done our soil pH is increased and comes to near neutrality. At this condition most of the nutrients whatever present in the soil they comes into the available condition so that plant can uptake. So, we have already discussed what about the different type of intercrops in rice. Similarly, just like our rice, our choice of intercropping is more in compared to the maize because maize is mostly growing in the upland condition or where there is no water stagnation. And we should always promote different type of legumes. And if you see in the picture, we are growing how intercropping with maize plus groundnut and also we are growing maize plus soybean. So, this type of cropping system not only enhancing the crop biodiversity, but they also enhance the soil fertility because biological nitrogen fixation is very much is a paramount importance whenever we go for organic farming. And always we have to promote this type of cropping system, maybe intercropping or also legumes in the cropping system so that our soil fertility will be balanced. Soil structure that is mainly physical and biological structure is also enhanced by the different type of intercroppings. And if you see by this we can manage a very good organic farm. If you see this is the maize plus soybean, we are growing two line of maize two line of maize and we are also growing two lines of rice. So, it is called pair row planting. So, by this technology we are not only getting the maize, but we are also getting the soybean and they are also thus enhancing the soil fertility. Similarly, if you see whenever we are growing in maize in rice, maize in soybean, sometimes soybean growth is too high. So, what say farmers can do? They can simply de-topping. You see a small farmer is cutting all the leaves of the soybean and after that leaves has given to the soil. So, their leaves have very good amount of nutrients. So, whatever the nutrient is they are going back to the soil, they also act as a soil conditioner. And after that again the regrowth will come and we can harvest soybean seeds and for that we can also go for the oil seed purpose. They are also giving too much nitrogen fixation and some part they are providing to the associated cereal. So, our total nitrogen demand for the maize is also reduced. Similarly, different lots of weed biomass is available sometimes in splits. One yield is ambrosia, one weed that is in the northeastern part of India, it is very easily available. So, this type of weed biomass, whatever in the farm vicinity, simply we can cut it, chop it and mix in between maize line. So, it help not only give some nutrients and also soil conditioner, but if there is no rain, particularly suppose you are getting 15 days no rain. So, there may be some deficiency of soil moisture in the field, but if we go this type of mulching technology even under our maize, so they will reduce the soil evaporation losses and they all they does not allow the direct entry of the sunlight in the soil. So, due to the water enhancing the water conservation or water holding capacity of the soil, a plant can grow without giving any extra irrigation. Similarly, this is different type of one weed that is Eupeteria moderatum and if you see what is the nitrogen content, about 2.47 percent nitrogen. 0.5 percent of the phosphorus and 0.8 percent potassium is present. So, all the time in organic farming always we have to think in a holistic approach. What about the different type of on farm or off farm source of nutrient we have to take care of because you cannot use a very easily available nitrogenous fertilizers like urea. So, you always have to think some this type of innovating things how we can you best use of our all off farm and on farm resources in a very systematic manner so that there will be no problem of any so nutrient deficiency in organic farming. Always we are promote to tie to different crops. If we are only going maize, it is not because our population is enhancing. So, we have to produce more crop, more yield. And if you see for oil seed production, we have not got the self sufficiency. Every year, thousand and thousand rupees of crores we are spending to purchase oil from the other countries. And if you see by this process, in case of maize, how we can the promote growth of the rape seed mustard? If you see this is the different type of picture and you can see within maize we are showing different type of this weed, this called is ambrosia and after the germination of the maize, you see we have grown in the maize fellow mustards. And after the germination of this rape seed mustard, whatever the we maize stock is available, we put here. So, it will conserve the soil moisture. Because most of the type this type of crops, rapeseed, mustard or any other things when we are growing in rice in maize fellow, they are growing in the residual soil moisture. We cannot, we are not applying any too much irrigation because every time, everywhere irrigation is not available. But growing this method, you see one hectare left side you give, when there is no subtype of conservation measure of so mulching has been done, 
the yield is very less only 192 kilo per hectare very less yield. But by the same by conserving this maize residue and weed biomass when you are applying and growing rapeseed mustard after may you see the yield is enhanced to several folds to near about 1 ton per hectare. So, these are very simple and cheap techniques you have not to purchase any of these things from the market. So, your cost of cultivation will be less and you can successfully grow a second crop like rapeseed mustard after the maize and that will enhance your not only the total yield also your income. There are different type of insect is attacking also pests and you have to manage them organically and there is a system you cannot go for inorganic insecticide. There is different type of where is maize cambora, star mower, neem cake we are applied. There are lots of organic materials like dairy shom, panchagobbo, cow urine they are also very much effective. And so, they, they previously this type of neem oil also is not available. Nowadays lot of entrepreneurs and private industry is also coming for production of this type of organic insecticide or pesticide. So, nowadays due to the consumer preference due to the enhancement of the area under organic farming due to the and production of this different type of organic pesticides in the market a farmer has can get different type of and he can also different type of bio herbicides and also they use the metarhizum formulation buberia. Previously there was not a single problem if you see previously there was different type of crops fall army war. If you see 3 or 4 years back this insect was not present in India, but just 3 years back this insect come from in the Karnataka. And nowadays this one single insect fall army wars has they are covered the whole of India and they are getting lost of damage. But if you see under organic farming we are able to control the fall army war. Gen there is one thing is Bt that is bacillus thuringiensis in some time, but the bacillus Bt that protein that protein formulation is allowed under the organic farming. And if you give just we have given two spray of neem oil and oh, just a 5 ml per liter and also give one spray of Bt that is also just 2 ml per liter, we can control the foral army worm attack in maize. Besides that, so we have so some cultural practices like we have to go this type of different type of sand and so always you have to take the sanitation and cleanliness. So, that our total infestation of any insect pest or disease will be less not only for the maize, but for whatever the crops you want to grow under a organic farm condition. The different type of maize based cropping system also is being promoted. It should not be only maize and maize or rice maize like this. There may be maize mustard, there may be maize chickpea, maize cotton, but also this rice maize has emerged a potential system. But in case of organic farming, we should not allow this type of cropping system because if you are growing only cereal, cereal, then there will be problem of nutrition depletion and also the soil fertility. So, we have to promote some type of cropping system either for rice or maize where legume should be a integrate part of that. This is the different type of maize insect press. If you see dead heart, puppy dress, talking come leaf blight and maize terbore. And this is the more important what I am telling this is called the fall army one. It only came in India 3 years, 2 years, 3 years back, but it has invaded like anything because whenever some insect is coming from the outer country or from out foreign countries. So, there is no presence of natural enemy. When natural enemy is not present in our ecosystem, so their population is increasing like anything. So, if you see this is the scrapping of leaf and most of the growing part they are using, they are eating. So, whenever the plant may be leaf, but your main cob will not come. So, if the cob will not come, the definitely will not get any yield. But in organic farming by scientific amalgamation of different type of neem oil, Bt and some metarsium and buberia, we are able to control this pest even under the organic condition. So, these are the different type of also cropping system for intercropping. We are allowing maize, pahelodal buckwheat, make bean pea, make bean rasma, bean you see most of the time we have want to promote any one of the legumes. So, legumes should be incorporated in everywhere. There are different type of diseases also there and we can spray the different type of dairy soam or panchagobbo kaurin is ineffective. So, although in organic farming our source we cannot use any type of different type of pesticide, but whatever the production is there, whatever the indigenous technique and knowledge is present in our system and whatever the new type of different organic insecticide or pesticide, we have to scientifically integrate them and scientifically use them to control the pest and diseases. A lots of area in eastern India or other parts after the maize the people is growing nothing because they are getting rain from the month of April to October, but not getting any rain November, December, January, February and there is no irrigation facility there. So, how you go grow a second crop? In that condition after maize 
a second successfully crop can be grown as a French bean. You see, we have done the maize, so maize crop sown in the line and the maize harvested in the month of August. So, what we have done? We keep 1 meter standing maize. So, we have taken whatever the residue of the maize above side of the field and we cut at 1 meter height. After that, we are not uprooting the maize stalks. You see, in between maize lines, we are going for the zero tillage. If we go total cultivation of tillage, so zero tillage also a very important, conservation agriculture is very much important for organic farming. And when we are growing this type of no-till condition, our soil moisture is being conserved. So, we put French bean seed beside the maize lines without disturbing the soil too much. And you see, after some time, our small farm, whatever the French bean is being germinated. So, when they become germinated, what we will do? whatever the maize stock, upper part of the maize stock, which we keep near about the field, we put as a mulch material here in between lines. So, what? They will provide the nutrients that also conserve the soil moisture, because I have already told probably in the month of October onwards, in the November or December, January, there is no rainfall. So, by this process, you can conserve the soil moisture, so that your French bean can be grow without any giving irrigation. And you see, this type of French bean, this is pole type, so ne they need some anchorage or support. And this maize stock, they are helping to give support for the French bean crops. So, you there is a reduction of 30 to 40 percent, 40 percent of the bamboo requirement. So, by this process, how we are conserving the soil moisture and whatever the maize residue and other things, we are conserving within the soil. So, whatever the nutrient has been taken by the maize plants or maize residue, they are again going back to the soil. So, this is the fundamental thing always we have to think this type of residue management and conservation agriculture under organic farming for making it a sustainable one. The also, a wheat is also very important cereal crop in India and majority of our western part Punjab, Haryana, western Inter Uttar Pradesh, there is a wheat is cult being cultivated. So, we can also can grow organically in wheat. So, there is different type of recommendation is there, you can use enriched compost, vermi compost, green limb manure, nincap. And these two fertilizer, one is azospirillum, azospirillum is mostly important for the nitrogen and PSP that is for the phosphorus solubilizing bacteria is recommended to enhance the growth in yield. Also, when is the October is the most month of sowing and we have to also use the treat. Seed treatment is very much important in organic farming because every time in case of inorganic farming whenever some insect pest or disease in come, you have the choice to apply different type of insecticide or fungicide. But in case of organic farming, our source is very much limited. So, in that condition, we have to always try to promote seed treatment. So, if you there are lots of microorganisms is there, one is the trichoderma if you see and azospirillum and pseudomonas, we can simply mix with the soil and sow in the plant. So, whenever in the planting condition, this small amount is, is micro, whatever the microbes, they evenly distributed in the whole field. And after they are reaching that point, they are popularly in NCAS. So, they not only help to different type of fixation of nitrogen or as per the phosphorus solubilizing, they also give the plant so damage, they also prevent the plant for a damage of different type of insect pest and diseases. And foliar spray we can dab also with panchagrubbo and 10 percent cow urine. Plant protection always we have to need resistant varieties. Because in organic farming, we have to promote that type of varieties where the insect pest or disease attack is very much less. A crop or a variety may be is yielding very good, very high yield, but you the lot of insect pest and disease, most of our case if you see the hybrids, their very yield is very high, but they are also too much susceptible to the different type of insect pest and diseases and everywhere we have to apply lots of insecticides and pesticides or fungicide. But in case of organic farming, we should not promote that type of varieties or germplasm where it too much susceptible to pest and diseases. We have to use some type of traditional, we can use high yielding varieties and other hybrids, but we have to think, we have to see whether they are little bit resistant to the pe insect pest or diseases or not. So, wheat based cropping system, we can, there are a different area, majorly rice wheat growing area, Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and the Himachal Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. And if you see different agroclimatic zone wheat is growing, our lower Gangetic plain, middle Gangetic plain, upper Gangetic plain and trans Gangetic plain. So, everywhere if you see the our trans Gangetic or in the upper Gangetic plain, rice wheat is a major cropping system. So, this not only yield a very significant amount and contribute our food grade production, but over the use of too much fertilizer more than 200 kilo of NPK per hectare and too much irrigation especially for the second crop of wheat, 
there is a problem of the soil fertility deterioration. Previously, the factor productivity has been declined. Previously, farmers were getting very good yield by applying 1 kilo urea. Nowadays, that incremental yield even after application of this fertilizer is decreasing. Similarly, there are lots of salinization problem is coming and water table every time when are using too much water uplifting from the soil in the ground water and this water table is going to the down. So, there may be some problem after 20 or 30 years and we have to take care of these things and one of these panacea for this thing every time you should not follow this type of cropping system every year, you try to change the cropping system either you change the rice or either we change the wheat with some alternative crop especially for the legumes. You should also incorporate green gram, green manuring, intercropping, cover crop, mulching. So, all these technologies of organic farming you should adopt for sustaining your soil fertility. This is the different type of pulse production is there. In southern India you can go for rice per urdhvin, in eastern India rice plus lentil, in central India rice per lathyrus. They always change according to the agroclimatic situation and farmer's choice. If you go to the eastern side, the people are mostly preferring the lentil as a dal. If you go to the now current or main part of India just with middle part that is Uttar Pradesh and others, people are using pigeon pea as a dal. So, always you have a farmer's choice and you had is always you have to take care of that choice and also the what is the agroclimatic suitability of a particular crop, then only you should recommend. And different sequential protein in eastern India rice cheek pea, while eastern India rice lentil also, northeastern region also so we can go for lane. There are different types of these microorganisms which play a very important role. These are called biofertilizers. They are making fertilizer producing plant, but they are living organisms like uh, associating symbiotic the azospirilla. They also known to the nitrogen fixation and they give easily 25 to 30 kilo nitrogen per hectare. So, in our agricultural system in cause of wheat and other, we should always promote this type of different type of biofertilizer like azospirilla. Similarly, azotobacter, it is a free living microbes. And it is also a one type of battery fertilizer and fixing of the nitrogen. And different type of company you see the IPCO, they are also selling in the one market in the name of the azotobacter. So, this is a liquid bio fertilizer. So, a farmer should be always uh, should be promoted to use this type of different type of bio fertilizer under in case of organic farming where you cannot apply different type of nitrogenous fertilizer which are producing in the factory. So, this year also there is also synthesized growth promoting hormone. So, they not only help in the nitrogen fixation, but also they are giving different type of hormones like auxin, gibberellins and if you see one is the Bruggin LV, BGA. There is a very good, there is a the symbiosis between one thing is Azola, mostly the species of Azola pinacta and one is the blue green LV, BGA. So, they live together in association. So, Azola is giving provide the space and food to the BGA and what BGA is doing? They have the capacity to at fix atmospheric nitrogen. So, whatever the nitrogen they are fixing, they are also providing that to the azola. So, there is a symbiosis and this type of azola and BGA symbiosis, we can culture in our own farm. We can make in a small pit, in a plastic tank and however the azola production is enhanced to a particular level, this azola we can also apply in the rice field because in rice field also there is a lot of water. We try to maintain 2, 3 to 5 centimeter water stagnation. So, in this condition if we apply azola, our the azola growth will be huge. So, they not only enhance the nitrogen fixation and give nitrogen to the soil, they are also producing too much of generation of the biomass. So, this biomass when our after the decays they are going again back to the soil, they give the nutrients, they also enhance the soil physical and biological condition. So, they are also act as a soil conditioner and if you see how we can grow this type of azola in a small tank, may also plastic sheet, we have to follow some protocol after aquatic weed, the, after 15 to days the thick layer of azola high weight 100 and 150 kilo for a tank and this you can use for your rice field. This is very much important we can use for the rice and this type of always in case of lowland rice paddy cultivation, we have to promote of this type of azola and BGA culture where so that our nutrient requirement from the outside may be compost, FOM and other will be reduced. So, pulses has a very good role for our sustainable agriculture. Pulse is a part of legume which are used every day for a dull. They have the capacity to fix nitrogen because they are producing nodules and within nodules they are have some certain rhizobium bacteria and this rhizobium has the capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen to the soil. 
but all this rhizobium have very much host specificity. Some particular rhizobium species may be work for P, but that rhizobium probably may not work for the cow P. So, every time we have to promote this type of culture in lab and we have to market this type of different type of strains of very efficient rhizobium and we have to apply in the field either may be soil treatment other is the seed treatment. So, in the larger produce if we see this is the plant and this is the root nodules and this nodules, this is the space of the biological nitrogen fixation. They also help in the better structure of the soil and they also contribute the carbon dioxide sequestration because every time in our climate change there is too much carbon dioxide we are emitting. So, these plants can help to conserve the carbon uh, or farming the carbon from the atmosphere and bringing back into the soil. So, this type always this type of legume cultivation we should be promote under organic farming. This is the contribution of the biological nitrogen fixation. If you see average for chickpea it is 70 kilo, whereas in case of lupins and field pea 105 to 130 kilo nitrogen can be fixed. So, that this that is why already I have told in my previous lecture one lecture, so whenever the total nitrogen production, total ammonia production or urea production we are doing in industrically, but the what the nature is biologically fixing nitrogen in the soil is amount is very high. And so, different type of nitrogen derived from the atmosphere from 41 to 60 percent and so always we have to promote this type of crops in our cropping system whenever you going for any rice or wheat. So, that should be part of the intercropping, maybe mixed cropping or maybe cropping sequence. And if you see different the response, whenever we are getting a very huge response and if you see, so the yield may be enhanced 20 percent, 30 percent. When you are using rhizobium and we are not re, uh, using rhizobium as a bio fertilizer for this type of crops mainly the legumes or pulses, the yield will be enhanced and it will be in different range. And if you see that, but what is the things our major area of the rice area is going by wheat, rice wheat cropping system. Apart from the rice wheat cropping system more than 10 million hectare in India where after rice the field is totally kept fallow and we are not growing any second crop. But there is a enough time period and every time we have to pulse we are sometime we have to pulse also purchase from the outside. So, how to increase the pulse production in this rice fellow where after rice no one nothing is growing. So, there are lots of scientific knowledge and technology has been come up by that we can grow a second crop pulse without irrigation or with very less one or two life saving irrigation mostly using by the residual soil moisture. And if you see for that we have to need very low that is the short duration of the rice and short duration of the cultivation of lentil pea. There are different type of factors which are hindering the process. Somewhere is a soil acidity is there, somewhere alkalinity is there, low phosphorus ability is there. You see we are getting very high rainfall in the Kharif season, but most of the rainfall is situated in the month of April to October and virtually we are getting no rain in the month of November, December, January and February. So, if we want to this type of pulse crop, we have to think what about the different type of conservation agriculture practices and the soil moisture conservation is needed. Only then we can grow for the pulses after rice without giving any irrigation. So, only within most of the farmers are small and marginal in nature and farmer has a tendency to know if we grow chickpea, lentil and other thing nothing I have to take care of. This is not like also they have a hardy in nature they have a deep root system, they can fix nitrogen, but we have to take care of certain things whenever we are growing this type of crop also. So, they also need attention and there is some problem of the quality seed supply and irrigation facility. And if you see in eastern part of India rice is a major crop and after rice there is too much moisture in the field. So, you cannot go for a tilling process. If you go for tilling places lots of puddling due to then other things lot of your big big clod will be developed and your soil moisture will be too harsh you cannot run tractor. And if you go to the upper area, if you till the frequently tillage has been done, then the soil moisture will go. So, in that condition what we are always provocating to go pulse under the zero till cultivation. If you see we can apply sufficient organic manure and other things transplant young seedling 20 to 25 days old. So, after that we make a physiological drainage. So, you see in this condition we make some drain before the harvesting of the rice. So, whatever water is there it goes to outside of the field. If there is too much moisture we cannot go for the second crop. And if you see lentil and pea should be sown in the second 49 of November up to the first note of December and always short duration rice varies are recommended. Late showing what is the problem of the late showing you see. 
if the sowing is late in case of main in case of up punjab haryana and other side grow for the second crop there is too much temperature it is month of april or may so yield will be less in case of eastern india in the northeastern part of india if you grow very late in the march end or april end we are getting pre monsoon rain so that will coincide your harvesting will be coincide with that so you have to always sow within a very specific time period so for that not only the variety of pulses we need the short duration but also we need the rice also short duration so that rice will be harvested earlier and within that time very optimum time we can grow for the second crop pulses this is the second method you see the different type of how we can grow we can generally this is the rice field and within the rice field we are making small furrow so we are not doing any tillage activity if we do the tillage soil moisture will go and there is no irrigation facility we cannot grow so under zero tillage practice with the help of a small furrow opener you the farmers can make small small narrow furrow but rice have to sow in the lines and if you see place 3 through to 5 ton oil decomposed foim we can gauge in between rice line here and after the rice we are putting the seed everywhere in between rice so rice always stubble is there so this rice stubble also helps in conserving the soil moisture so after that after that the putting we should cover with foim and soil mixture because if you put the seed of the pulses in rice fellow and does not cover the majority of the your uh, uh, seeds will be eaten by the birds and also there will be less soil seed contact so germination will be too much poor and you see we should treatment of the rhizobium this is one of the bio fertilizer we should always promote how you make a small packet and you make just a water solution with the jaggery so that and you put the rhizobium seed so after that whenever the solution is ready because jaggery will give the stickiness so after that you can mix with the soil and little bit you can dry in the shade for certain hours and after that this seed can be easily planted in the field crop so by this process whatever the rhizobium we are just taken from a single packet that rhizobium has been cancer throughout the field so that will enhance their multiplication and that will help the nitrogen fixation in the soil so that will enhance the yield of the lentil or pea whatever crop you are growing and due to the nitrogen fixation and majority of nutrient they are staying in the soil whenever you are growing rice or another crops in succession their yield will be also enhanced so there are different type of agriculture we are promoting and if we see in organic farming we have very limited of organic fertilizer we cannot use different type of organic fertilizer inorganic fertilizer in our farm so always we have to take care of all the things in a sufficient manner we are growing every day rice wheat maize and we are also promoting different type of pulses cultivation and if you see in case of rice the majority area is rice wheat cropping system and rice wheat cropping system above after the rice more than 10 million hectare of our area is fellow so how efficiently we can use for the cultivation of different type of pulses that is a major thing nowadays we are also promoting different type of cultivation of the millets its millets may be the major millets like sorghum palm millet and there is also some small millets like finger millet kodo millet and also there is foxtail millet little millet prosum millet all these millets are very nutritive in nature their protein content mineral content is very high so they are also called nowadays nutri cereal and this whatever the millet they need they are very hardy in nature insect pest disease attack is very much low and they also can go for any area where there is very less amount of rainfall so this type of millets we should always promote to grow in our cropping system and they are very much fit to the organic farming they are fit to the organic farming because first they need very less amount of nutrient we can easily give by 5 ton foim per hectare they are always resistant to insect pest so you are taking care of application of different type of our bio pesticide or organic pesticide will be minimum and also they are very costly if you go to the any good quality market some type of this millets has been sell more than 100 rupees a kilo and if there is organic certification of this millet we can also sell not only in the domestic market but also this millet can be sell outside of the india and these to the nutrient very high quality of nutrients very easily digestible protein the millets are preferred under different type of fast food and different type of our in food system there are different type of lots and biscuits and others cookies has been made due to the millets so this type of climate resilient crop 
this type of crop which have a very new, not nutrient exhaustive in nature, we should provide it in organic farming. And second part is the legumes. Whenever you are growing any legumes, you know, cropping system, it is not only enhancing the soil fertility, but it also make your soil a very good physical, chemical and biological structure. So, our legumes should be incorporated whenever we go for any management system, they can be incorporated as a mixed crop, as a cover crop, as a inter crop, otherwise you should promote this type of cultivation of different type of legumes after the rice and maize fellow. So, when in number different field crops, we are managing our field such a very nice crop rotational messes where legume is an integrate part in under our the cereal system and then our organic farming should be sustainable. We have not to depend every time to purchase of different type of quality and vermicompost from the market and only then a farmer can get profit and that is our ultimate tail. So, in this process we can make a sustainable organic farm, so that will not only give the quality food, but that also producing enough food without the there is yield penalty and only then a farmer will get a very good profit and also if he get the premium price of organic produce, certainly his income may be doubled, which is the target of our present government. Thank you.